<laughs> well, now in our analysis, I think we see, uh, again, we, we did this with Yale, it'll be part of this upcoming uh, trial, we did see a positive impact on aging, uh, particularly some clocks. Hi, Ryan. Yeah, so it's great to uh, have you back on the podcast again. It feels like quite a while. So, yeah, we've got quite a few topics to dive into. So I know there's been lots of studies on alcohol and obviously having a small amount is not too negative for your health. I've seen like an interesting one, women on six units of alcohol a week, I believe, and then 29. And there was a huge difference in epigenetic aging. Um, so what, I wondered what's your opinion on like micro dosing, like things like THC, psilocybin, uh, as a yeah. kind of alternative to alcohol and if you're trying to reduce biological age i have no idea sorry tony okay. this is one <laughs> sure. of those areas i yeah. i just have sure. no yeah. idea you know i'm a i think psilocybin um especially again for, we're going back to this whole mental health is your is health um type of mm -hmm. uh relationship i think it's probably certainly going to have a positive benefit in the future for a certain select group of individuals and and so i think that that's uh, uh certainly a, a no-brainer um, you know, I think that also when people talk about THC, um, I think time and time again, we see any inhalation, um, whether it's smoking, uh, whether it's vaping, I think has negative impacts on sure, health. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. I think that uh, I, I feel fairly certain to say that if you're administering it via an inhalation route, it's probably negative. Um, yeah, and, I can imagine. Uh, what, what about for orally then, do you think, like doing um, edibles? I don't know. Um, yeah, there. And, and, and yeah. I think that uh, I've yet to see the, the really negative data that I've seen with the inhalation products. Uh, uh, hmm. but, but I think that if I were to do it, I would just say oral, at least at the moment, um, would hmm. be the way to go. And then... Um, yeah, so, so I think for those two in particular, um, I, I think I'm hopeful for both of them. Um, uh, but I think that I'm probably more hopeful for the psilocybin. Um, I will say that we also did a ketamine trial um, okay. uh, as well. Um, and again, in our original analysis, we didn't see an improvement with biological age. We didn't see a decrease, but we didn't see okay. really anything. Well, that's, that's, still our, that's still positive in itself if you're going to compare it yeah. with alcohol. Then, yeah. Well, now in our analysis, I think we see, uh, again, we, we did this with Yale. It'll be part of this upcoming uh, trial. We did see a positive impact on aging, uh, particularly some clocks, um, some second mm. generation clocks like PhenoAge. And so, so uh, again, I, I, I'm even hopeful for that. Um, I, I, so I think, uh, again, anything which is infecting your mental status is probably a drug mm target for longevity because your mental status makes a difference yeah, yeah and i guess it depends if yes if you're talking for mental health things obviously it increases mm -hmm. um neuroplasticity that kind of thing doesn't it and so for that thing and then it's so that's obviously depends on what we're talking about like micro or mini dose where you're getting a small psychoactive effect um for either mental health treatment or as an alternative to alcohol but then i think a lot of people also um kind of maybe minimize the risk of it. Obviously, if you do, if you, it's all down to the dose, I believe. When you do, it's anything, even THC, I believe, you, you know, it, it can cause mental health problems, schizophrenia, that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. So especially younger very... age groups. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, which is interesting in and of itself. Mm. Uh, it might be, again, mechanistic in action. Um, but, but sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, so I guess it's what, like um, people talk about drugs, you know, having an opposite effect at one one dose is one effect, but then they might relax you at one effect at uh, one dose, and then at <clears throat> excuse me, at a higher dose that has the complete reverse effect, schizophrenia or paranoia, that kind of thing. So it's very very dose dependent. I think these things are. So people obviously just need to tread yeah. with caution. I will say one thing about alcohol, which is interesting, is that um, you know. Early in the, the my experience with aging, alcohol was always a bad thing. The more alcohol, I should say, mm. uh, alcohol was a bad thing, but at low doses, like one to two drinks a week, people thought it might have had a beneficial effect. Um, over mm. these past, I would say, five years, it's gone the other way, where every I see that all alcohol use generally tends to be bad. Um, but again, at this most recent GRC conference, I saw some data, again, to the contrary, which suggests that, that ah, maybe a little bit particularly of red wine, especially, tends to maybe be good. Um, and so, you know, I think the alcohol issue is one that is has a lot of data points coming from a lot of different directions. It might depend on what type of alcohol you're drinking. It might depend on the sure, frequency, yeah. you yeah. know, but, but I think that um, I wouldn't rule it out as a complete negative at the moment. Um, I think right, some of the sure. initial data that I saw looked particularly convincing that it might be positive. Okay. Yeah. Like I say, the type of alcohol, if it's, mm -hmm. yeah. I think got all the binge drinking is not the way to go. Oh, yeah. Maybe some of <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs>